One of the hardest things to do in a movie is come up with a plausible yet satisfying way for the bad guy to be defeated. As a result, we see a lot of movies where the catalyst is actually the villain themselves, when they make a mistake that leads to their own defeat. The heroes in these stories, of course, weren't useless by any means, but they were given a massive assist by their villains, who committed a huge gaffe that sealed their eventual fate. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movie villains who caused their own defeats. Number 10, Benny the Mummy. The back and forth between Rick and Benny is one of the most entertaining things about 1999's The Mummy. And while the movie ends rather well for Rick, his on-again, off-again enemy slash punching bag isn't quite so lucky. See, at the end of the film, Benny becomes trapped underground while Rick, Evie, and Jonathan barely escape with their lives. With nowhere left to run and the lights slowly dimming, Benny is then greeted by a lone scarab beetle, aka the biggest source of my childhood nightmares, let me tell you that, before an entire swarm descends upon him and he's slowly eaten alive. Life. The thing with Benny is that while he has absolutely no trouble betraying his allies or playing dirty in order to get ahead, he's also incredibly greedy to boot, a personality trait that eventually gets him killed. He was only trapped underground in the first place because he went back inside to loot more gold and treasure. He could have easily run away at several points during the final act, and he had already secured himself plenty of loot by this point anyway, but no, instead he decided to try and carry another massive bag of goodies with him and even sealed himself underground with it. Number 9, Mary Lou Barebone, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. A sub-villain in the original Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them movie, Mary Lou Barebone may not have been a powerful magic user, but she was as vile and despicable as they come, so it was still great to watch when she got her comeuppance. And the person responsible for that comeuppance was her adopted son, Credence Barebone, whose Obscurus eventually killed her. See, Mary Lou's defining trait is that she hates magic and despises anybody who associates themselves with it. If her adopted kids, including Credence, started to show an interest in wizardry, she would just beat them as a reminder to her abide by her rules and her beliefs. However, all of those years of neglect and abuse at Mary Lou's hands caused Credence's magical energy to repress itself, creating a dark force inside him called an Obscurus. With plenty of time to sit and brew, Credence's Obscurus became incredibly powerful before bursting out of him and killing Mary Lou. So every single time she beat Credence, insulted him, and generally treated him like dirt, his power grew more and more dangerous. Number 8, Judge Doom, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. As your therapy bills probably reflect, Judge Doom's death is actually quite distressing for a film that's otherwise family friendly, but that only makes it more satisfying to watch and such a memorable moment in a film that's chock full of them. Here, Doom is melted to death after he's covered in toxic goop, courtesy of a missed punch by Eddie, screaming in agony as his eyes pop and he slowly gets eaten by the deadly liquid. It's not nice at all. In a fine dose of karma though, all of that pain and misery stemmed from his own hand. See, the toxic dip was created by Doom as a method of killing two creatures, a practice we first witness when he uses it to kill a cartoon shoe early in the movie. The villain's ultimate plan was to destroy Toontown using large quantities of this dip, but his scheme obviously does not pan out and he ends up going for a little dip himself. Eddie and Roger's interference in this plan of course does get him into the right position to be sprayed with the dip, yep sure, but Duma literally created the thing that destroyed him. It was quite stupid of him not to consider that he, who was a toon all along, had created a weapon that could easily off him at a moment's notice. Number 7, Dennis Nedry, Jurassic Park. Now yeah, you could say it's a stretch to call Dennis Nedry a villain at all, but then again, he was responsible for the entire Jurassic Park fiasco, incurring millions and millions of dollars in damages, destroying John Hammond's reputation, and last but not least, causing the painful deaths of countless individuals. He doesn't exactly smell like roses is all I'm saying. And his death is one of the most famous scenes in movie history too. While attempting to flee the island, he crashes his car and gets lost, before being greeted by a sinister looking Dalithosaurus. Upon clambering back into his car, he discovers that the dino has become his passenger, and it kills him before he has a chance to escape. Nedry's whole plan, of course, was to steal some dinosaur embryos and smuggle them off the island, on account of a bribe he had recently accepted. The thing is, Jurassic Park security was quite intense, so in order to enact his plan, he had to disable as much of it as possible, including the cages holding the attractions. This resulted in the dinosaurs wandering free, which in turn led to his brutal death. Quite why he didn't realise he would have to navigate an island full of hungry beasts though in order to escape with the embryos is just beyond me. Number 6, Aldrich Killian, Iron Man 3. 
You've got to give Aldrich Killian credit where credit is due. In Iron Man 3, he gave Tony Stark quite the run for his money. Having cornered him outside the wreckage of several hefty cargo containers, Killian could have struck the killing blow any time he liked, but instead, in classic villain fashion, he decided to do a spot of monologuing. This gave an extremist-infused Pepper Potts the chance to whack him in the face with a pole, though, before kicking a missile at him and exploding it with a detached Iron Man hand. Of course, Pepper Potts wasn't turned into a super soldier all by herself, or even with Tony's help. It was actually Killian who gave her those powers. He wanted to use her as bait, hoping that Tony would walk into the trap where he could possibly be persuaded to help Killian stabilize the extremist formula. Since, you know, it has been known to cause spontaneous explosions in people, and now Pepper was at risk of succumbing to a similar fate. But still, it's really odd and stupid of him that he just doesn't consider the possibility that Pepper might develop the strength necessary to overthrow him. Or perhaps he did consider it and just assumed that he would still be powerful enough, you know, yada yada yada, classic villain plot. Number five, Clayton Tarzan. If there's one compliment that you can pay Clayton, it is that he is determined as hell. This guy does not give up, and will do whatever it takes to see his goals through to completion. He's so determined and focused, in fact, that he didn't even realize he was about to kill himself when he was pursuing Tarzan through the jungle. During the final showdown, the hero and the villain end up fighting while tangled in a bunch of dangling vines, a situation that concludes with Clayton hanging by the neck. Clayton, as resolute as he is, only has eyes for Tarzan, and not in a sexy way. He's out for blood and is fixated on getting it so much so that when he starts relentlessly hacking his way through the twisting vines in an effort to reach his opponent, he doesn't actually realize that with each swing, he's getting one step closer to his own death. Tarzan, noticing the vine wrapping around Clayton's neck, even tries to warn him, but to no avail. If Clayton had simply stopped tucking his surroundings and properly absorbed the situation at hand, he maybe could have reached Tarzan a different way and won the fight. As things stand though, his bloodlust backfired and he created his own noose. Number four, Dr. McCabe, Bats. Bats is a weird little sci-fi horror film that released in 1999, and it's about, well, bats. But not just ordinary bats, this is about killer bats, the good kind. Midway through the film, our gang of heroes find themselves trapped inside a school while being attacked by these spooky winged beasts. Before Dr. McCabe foolishly goes outside, thinking he can somehow control the swarm of bats enveloping the building. He is wrong though, and they swiftly kill him because that's what these killer bats do. In the opening chunk of the film though, it's never actually made fully clear why these bats were made into killers, or what they're even doing flying around these small tech Texas town in which the film is set. Well, McCabe, who previously experimented with the bats and genetic modification, does say that he made them omnivorous and more intelligent so they might avoid extinction, but that the whole killing humans thing was just an accidental teensy weensy side effect. Of course, eventually, surprise, the film reveals that McCabe is actually just crazy and created the bats to become lethal predators that can kill humans. So like with Judge Doom, McCabe created the means of his own destruction and clearly didn't realize that building a human munching swarm of beasts would also make him a target as well. Number 3, Bellic, Donovan and Spalco, the Indiana Jones series. Belloc, Donovan, and Spalco are the villains of Raiders of the Lost Ark, The Last Crusade, and The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, respectively. And all three of these villains are killed by supernatural or extraterrestrial forces. Of course, Belloc has his mind blown, and not in a good way, when he opens the Ark of the Covenant, Donovan drinks water from the wrong cup and shrivels up like a prune, and Spalco is just sorta kinda disintegrated by aliens. As a result, there is a running joke fans like to make about the Indiana Jones franchise, and when you actually look at it, it's not really a joke at all. That is, of course, that Indy could literally stay at home and let the bad guys hunt the treasure slash artifact slash MacGuffin down by themselves, and events would more or less play how they do in the films. They would find said treasure, and it would just kill them. If Indy doesn't show up in Raiders, Belloc might still find the Ark, and if he did, he'd open it, just killing himself as he does anywhere. In Crusade, the same goes for Donovan, and in Kingdom, the same goes for Spalco. All of these bad guys would find their treasures eventually, even if Indy never showed his face. Number 2, Norman Osborn, Spider-Man. After No Way Home, we are well and truly in the Green Goblin Renaissance. But who could forget the villain's death in the 2002 Spider-Man movie, where facing off against one another in a crumbling abandoned building, the Green Goblin and Spider-Man stop throwing punches at one another when Norman reveals his identity to Peter, much to the hero's shock. While Norman pleads for mercy and tries to explain his dastardly actions, he subtly activates his spiky glider and sends it flying towards Spidey's back, who then dodges out of the way thanks to his spidey sense and sends the blade right into Norman's stomach. 
The whole thing about Spider-Man, though, is that he's a compassionate dude first and foremost, and as a result, this scene would have played out very differently had Norman simply decided not to act after revealing his identity to Peter. I mean, at that stage, the fighting was done and Spidey had the goblin cornered anyway. At worst, Norman would have been jailed, and who knows, with his power and influence, maybe he'd have even been able to wriggle his way out of it somehow. But no, he just couldn't resist the chance to make that one last move. Number 1. Thanos Avengers Endgame Thanos actually gets defeated twice in Avengers Endgame, but we'll be focusing on his second one more for this entry. Even though he was partly responsible for his initial decapitation too, having told Thor to go for the head the last time they met. When 2014 Thanos discovers that the Avengers have assembled the Infinity Stones for him in the future, he travels to that timeline bringing his armies with him and vowing to completely destroy humanity to rebuild a new world from the ashes. This of course doesn't go to plan, and he and his forces are snapped out of existence by a gauntlet wielded. Tony Stark. The only reason why 2014 Thanos decides to travel to the future timeline in the first place though is that he discovers the Avengers are trying to undo his snap, which we saw at the end of Infinity War. He wants to stop them from reversing that victory. Crucially though, he also discovers that eventually he will win anyway and will get to snap away half of all life in the universe if he just stays in his current timeline and pushes ahead with his Infinity Stone gathering plan. Granted, he also knows that he'll have his head chopped off by Thor if he stays on his current course, but knowing what a pain in the neck the Avengers will be for him in the future, surely he could plan ahead to counter their every move and then just kill them. Instead, he chooses to gamble on himself, hopping over to an alternate timeline where the Avengers, who have never been more determined to win, are in possession of a fully powered gauntlet. For all Thanos knew at this point though, he could have been wiped out by another snap the second he stepped foot outside of Avengers HQ. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any other villains that ended up defeating themselves, and what do you think of this lot? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't know, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.